Olive Chase, and I live in Marsons Mills. I have lived here now for a very long time, I'm not saying exactly, and I think some of my fondest memories are around my family. Um, Kennedy, the old Kennedy Rink at five in the morning on a warmish uh, March day with the fog rising so you can barely see the little kids uh, skating, my son among them. Uh, Gateway Park and Gateway Marina where our boat is at sunset. Um, if I look back, way back, I look at the Inn at the Mills in the olden days when we did weddings there that were very magical. Um, I have lots and lots of memories. I uh, grew up in Walpole, Massachusetts, and I came to the town of Barnesville like a lot of people. It was the lure of Cape Cod in the summertime. I came for the summer and really never left. My very first job, very, very first job, was at the old Lewis Bay Lodge, which is gone now. It's where Dark, Dockside is and sc off School Street down there. And I lived in the shack of a boarding house that they had my very first summer. Uh, totally accidentally, I came down here and that was all I was qualified to do when I started doing it. <laughs> Don't tell me you started as a waitress. <laughs> I did indeed. I did indeed. I did. And I did it early in my early days at uh, Hearth and Kettle. Then uh, the uh, bar shift at the Egg and I when it first opened. Um, then MD Armstrong's, where, where then I moved into management back to Hearth and Kettle and management, then, you know, started my own business. Sure. You know, Frank Catania is a good guy. When I was um, hired as an assistant manager at Hearth and Kettle in the 80s, um, Frank was like a big brother to me. He was wise, he was knowing, he was warm, he was helpful at all times. You know, VJ, I, I, my, my maiden name was Dorenzo, so I come from an Italian family, and I fit in with the Catanias really well. I think VJ looked at me as like sort of an other daughter. He's one of the smartest businessmen I ever knew uh, or have known, and I learned a really lot from him. Well, the first thing is I worked on Main Street in Hyannis for... I would say 15 years of one place or another because at MD Armstrong's, at the Egg and I, at the Hearth and Kettle. Um, I still think that Main Street and Hyannis is a truly alive, great place um, with a variety of people. Um, I, again, when I was the general manager at Hearth and Kettle, it was 24 hours a day. So we had a really interesting cast of characters that came and that went. Um, and, you know, that we had to. I had to manage it. I, I think I had 70 employees at one point there. Well, you were running a 24-hour a day, seven-day-a-week operation, uh, which, by the way, they ran really well. Sure. With my help, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to work for myself. I really wanted to work my, for myself from when I was 18 years old. I, I always felt um, that, that I could do it and that I wanted to be in control of things. Um, and frankly, sometimes I thought I was smarter than the people that I worked for. Not so much at Hearth and Kettle, but some of the earlier guys. And um, I wanted to own a restaurant. I was living in Marston's Mills. Every day I went home, at that point, um, in Centerville, right where Old Stage and Route 28 go, it was, it was very, still very rustic, but there was this little shopping center, and I really felt like that was the direction the growth in the town was going to go, and it would be a great place for business. I wanted to open a restaurant. I didn't really have enough money, um, so it was 1986. I opened a gourmet shop um, because they were kind of trendy then, and um, I opened the Casual Gourmet in 1986, and... Um, thought I was going to be in the retail business and very quickly learned that I wasn't actually going to make a really good living selling cheese. <laughs> and in 
And, you know, people started saying, well, do you cater parties? At first I said, no, I have a gourmet shop. And, but after a while I had to pay the rent. And I said, well, how much would you pay me to cater a party? And when they told me, I said, oh, yeah, I'm a caterer. And that's, <laughs> that's really how the casual gourmet started. <laughs> in the very early days, my husband and I, he, would wor he was working another job. He was in Independence Park. And I would work all day. I had one employee. We would ring the cash register and make the sandwiches and do everything. And then he'd come in at night. He'd wash the dishes. And I'd make the calzones and the things that were going to go in the case the next day. That's how we started. I think we did a good job. I, um, you know, it turned out that I was good at catering. It turned out more importantly that I really had learned from the people I worked for and I understood cash flow and insurance and um, marketing and a lot of the things that you really need as a small business person beyond the technical skills in your work. And I branched into weddings and parties and it really, it fit us really well. At the same time, we were doing some work for Heritage Museums and Gardens, which was Heritage Plantation then, and they decided that they would like to have a little cafe on their grounds. And um, I think a lot of people said no to them before they got to me, because <laughs> I was pretty little then. But Jean Shark called me and said, do you want to sell some sandwiches up here? And I said, sure, I'll do that. I, you know, really, I was just doing it because I didn't want to lose the catering. So now we're, you know, we're 23 years later, and we do weddings there. We, our Magnolia Cafe is quite successful. And that first contract led me to other contracts. I do. We have been in Cape Cod in the lobby of Cape Cod Hospital since 1999. Um, the same thing. I think a lot of the national guys probably said no before I <laughs> before they got to me. But you know, I'm there now, and those national guys aren't getting in. Um, we also we operate the food service at Hyannis Houston Community Center, and um, I have um, an exclusive at Highfield Hall in uh, Falmouth. So, and you know, we're probably 75, 80 weddings a year. The internet. It's all over the internet. In, in one of the things that happened to me was that my husband, because of his work, was a fairly early adopter online. And I started with a website in 1993, a long time before anybody else. And the internet changed how we do business here on the Cape. And because Cape Cod is a worldwide brand, I draw brides from all over the world. This year I have a bride in England, I have a bride in the Netherlands, I've had brides from Japan, Australia. They're all over the place. Um, I have a conference call later today with someone who's in Belgium. So we, we can reach out online to places that wouldn't know about us otherwise. Uh, well, we're, we're an off-premise caterer, so it's non-traditional sites all over Cape Cod. We certainly, Heritage Museums and Gardens and Highfield Hall are two of our main ones. We do a lot of work at Nauticus Marina in Osterville. Um, I have some homes that rent in various places on the Cape. And um, a couple of, there's a beautiful place in Toro called Calmar. Um, that's a, a cottage colony kind of place where we do weddings. They're all over the place. And then we do private homes. I mean, this is an affluent area, particularly in the summertime. There's a lot of people with beautiful homes who can put up a, a large tent and do an event in their backyard. Uh, whatever they can imagine, we will cook for them. We will take old family recipes. We will take the most cutting edge thing from Manhattan. We will do whatever. It, my business is built on service. And it's built on you come and you give me your vision and I will find a way to make that vision happen. That's the, the secret to it, really. And today, again, because we have so much access online, brides are very sophisticated. They're older. Um, they have a, a different idea in terms of what they want. And we also have something where we have a lot of dietary needs that we didn't have in the past. So we are constantly dealing with 
uh, gluten-free, vegan, vegetarian, dairy-free, um, you know, you name it and it's going on. There's more allergies, whether it's peanut allergies, shellfish allergies, et cetera, et cetera. So we work for months with a couple to sort of craft a menu. We do a lot of tastings so that they can sort of come up with what really fits the vision they had in mind and hopefully their guests will enjoy. Sure. And of course, a lot of seafood because we're on Cape Cod. Well, I was um, on the board of the Hyannis Chamber of Commerce. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. And I was actually the vice president of what they called community affairs at that point. I think we'd probably call it public policy now, but it was a little different in that day and age. And um, I had heard about this guy, Dave Chase, who at that time was at Independence Park, and I wanted him on my committee. And I ran into him at a fundraiser for a Barnstable Selectman. And um, I said, I want you on my committee. And, and he sort of was forced. <laughs> <laughs> so we started having community meetings. But after a while, he and I would have a drink after the meeting. And after a while, the meetings got shorter, the drinks got longer. And after a while, we didn't need a meeting. And you know, a year and a half or so in, we were the only community affair to come out of that committee. <laughs> so that's, you know, that's how Dave and I did it. So my son, David, uh, is Barnesville born and bred, just like his dad. He um, attended um, elementary school in Barnstable. He attended the grade five school. Then he went to the Lighthouse Charter School, where he met um, Jane Goodall, her Roots and Shoots program. He uh, then went to Sturgis, um, where he really, it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. And um, when he graduated, actually, uh, Jane named him her national youth leader. And he went and took a gap year, lived in DC, actually in Arlington for a year, and went all over the country for the, uh, the Goodall Institute. Then he went to St. Mary's College um, in Maryland. And now he's in politics. He got it. He, he, he hustled himself out of school and got a job with Bill Keating and was Bill's finance director. But then he went to um, Karen Spilka in her uh, congressional primary. And then he went to California, where he was finance director in the California 10th. Um, and now he has just moved over to uh, manager, and he is going to manage a candidate in the Nevada 4th. So he's far away from me right now, but he's going to change the world. I taught him how to til tilt at windmills at an early age. <laughs> well, it started, you know, I, I, I was extremely involved in elementary school. And when education reform happened in 1993, I actually at the Marsons Mills West Elementary, I sat on the first school council in the town. And um, then when he went to grade five, I sat on Tom McDonald's board, in fact, on that executive committee. And when he went to um, Lighthouse, I said, well, let me see what's going on there. I went and sat in. Every time I went and sat in a meeting, somebody put me on a board. Um, and as Dave was getting done, we actually, he was, the surgeon wasn't really where he was going to go. Um, but there was an article in the paper, the town was fighting with Sturgis. And, I just thought it was really dumb, so I called them up and said, look, this is not how you do things in this town. You're causing yourself problems you don't need to have. And next thing I knew, <laughs> well, they were trying to get me on the board, so I went to an open house, and Davey decided he wanted to go there. So then I said, all right. And actually, one of the most meaningful experiences of my life was to be there as we hired Eric Kaiser. As, uh, to be able to watch Sturgis bloom and come into its potential and be so meaningful in the lives of so many kids. Really, really meaningful. And, and in my own child's life as well. I am the vice chair of the Cape Cod Chamber of Commerce, board of the Mass Restaurant Association. And, um, you know, that's about it.
I think it was Rogers and... I was on the board of the International Caterers Association, but three boards is too much. My husband would agree with that sentiment. <laughs> I have to say he would. <laughs> when I came home and he said, you're going to do what? I'm like, well, you know, Dave, I, I think, you know, it's a good thing. Um, Cape Cod has issues. And the Cape Cod Chamber is, you know, helping to, to keep us in a good place um, as a community, as business people, as all those things. I think it's necessary. Um, if you have the means and you have the opportunity, it's necessary to be a citizen of your community and your country and to help where you can help. And if you don't do those things, you don't have any right to complain. None. <laughs> That's not true. Dave and I together, just the two of us on the boat, yes. We've had the occasional people. We, we love the boat. And now, I'll be honest, you could, because you know, my husband loves the boat more than I do. <laughs> it's his baby. Um, I've always said, you know, I would never ask him to, you know, me or the boat or me or the dog. I'd probably lose. But, um, but the boat is a great thing. And being down, there is no better place to be than down in Gateway Marina where you're kind of in in the middle, again, of a very vibrant waterfront and town that, that is your community. And at the same time, you know, you can sort of sail out easy and sail back easy. And, you know, Dave was on that waiting list probably for 15 years before that slip came up, so. Yes, Sail Cape Cod is a nonprofit that's helping developmentally um, challenged people get out on the water, sail. Um, I think it does a lot of good things in terms of feeling confident and feeling that. And Dave, whenever he can, is giving them time and, and taking um, young adults uh, out on the boat. Pretty much as often as they ask, unless I am having such a busy Saturday that I say, no, you can't. We don't use them often, um, but you know, sometimes I need to sit in the office just to answer the phone because every single other person I know is coming with me on various weddings and parties. But otherwise, he goes, you know, fairly often. Uh, it's up to them, though, how often they want to do it. It doesn't. It's. It doesn't work that way. So you, we could have a day with eight jobs, but it's not the biggest day you ever had. It's about how big each event is. Five big weddings beat eight smaller parties any day and are harder to execute, harder to pull off. And um, if you are having a birthday party and we cater it and it's not quite everything you wanted it to be, we can do another party for you. But if we screw up your wedding, there's no, no going back. So I call it working without a net and you know that you have to be pretty perfect all the time so we I look at it partially on how big the volume is how many people I need to put in the field that day you know a top busy day I might put 70 or 80 people out in the field so you know that's the and it's challenging that's that's because you're going to five or six different locations you have a lot of people that only work for you you know a couple of days a month maybe and you have to make all these people into a team and have everything come off like clockwork. Those trucks have to leave right on time. I mean, there's enormous amounts. I, I say what it is is I'm a general, and I put an army in the field every Saturday. It needs supply lines. It needs foot soldiers. It needs captains. And it's, you know, can I do it and will I win the war? So far, so good. You know what I mean? It's not, you know, but. I have my executive chef and my sous chef. I have my director of catering, that is my sister Mary. I have my operations person who is Radu. I have three salespeople. I have a bookkeeper and the bookkeeper has an assistant. I have a pastry chef and an assistant pastry chef. I have um, a, a, a head steward really who is the been working for me for 20 years, the heartbeat of the 
company because he gets those trucks on the road. He gets all the non-foods. He makes sure every salt and pepper shaker, every fork, every coffee cup and saucer is packed in the appropriate numbers in the appropriate trucks that are leaving at the appropriate time. And then there's a whole bunch of other people that contribute to it. Leo, 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 fine. You know, uh, it was 1986, so I opened in April, and Dave and I got married in June, and uh, it must have been in uh, July, maybe, early July, he came to me, look, we're gonna have a concert, and I need food. Okay, I want picnic baskets, and I need 250 of them. You know, at that point, I have this time. I have one employee, two employees, and was like, yeah, I can do it. I've, I've always done that. I've always said, sure, we can do that, yep. And, and we did, we, we have pictures of uh, Susan Bullock, who was working for me at the time, hand-cutting chicken, because we didn't know we could buy eight-cut chicken at that point. Um, and not only that, but he wanted us to sell concessions and he thought, and I thought too, well, a, a, a chicken, picnic chicken would be great. So we did 100 bags of a boxed chicken lunch um, that we sold 10. It was our first big donation to the Salvation Army. <laughs> However, then we did it for a lot of years, for a lot of years, for a lot of years, 20 23, something like that, before I said, you know what, give somebody else a chance because I have other things to do. <laughs> we, would, we would put together, we got to the point where you're putting together 500 baskets and I would be turning down a wedding on the Saturday to make sure I had the space to do these and finally said, yeah, but we still go every year. We still attend. I think the, the strongest point beyond our natural beauty, which of course is so important, is the sense of community and the, the sense that people work together and help each other and you know people and you, you know, I, I, I really feel I would not want to live anyplace else but this and, and that's in large part. And you know, over the years, many people helped me and hopefully I've helped a few people, but we're all sort of part of that one community. Uh, I think if you asked me that question two years ago, I would have said that wastewater was going to be our biggest challenge. But I, I think at this point, considering the work being done in the community, the Cape Cod Commission, the Chamber, all those things, I think we've begun to really get a handle on that issue. I think now our biggest issue that we have is that we're getting too old too fast and that our young people aren't staying here, including my own that there's not enough to keep them, and that young families can't move here because we don't have appropriate housing at an appropriate um, price. You know, the, the large numbers of people from all over the country and even all over the world who want to come here and buy a second home and retire here are a wonderful thing, but right now in the winter time, I think the estimate is 35% of our housing stock is sitting empty. And because they come from places where they can pay higher prices, that they're driving up the price of all of our real estate, and we have not uh, the ability to attract um, the people who would make us stay a vibrant community, the people with children, the people who work. I, I think it's, it's the concern we should all be working on right now. And I think there are people looking at it because obviously density may be, you know, there's zoning changes that might help us in all of this as well as looking at what do millennials want now because they want some things we don't quite have. Um, it's tough to be a single young person on Cape Cod. Uh, I think, honestly, December is my favorite season. But I don't know if that's because of this is where I live. It's just because I love the holidays and family. And, you know, my favorite time of year goes from Thanksgiving till New Year's. And, but that's more about my family probably than about necessarily the town of Barnstable. I 
think it was the day we bought our building. I, I, I felt like it was a culmination of so many things that I was able to buy a piece of real estate that I had wanted for a long time. And, you know, I have pride of ownership in it. I, I think that might have been it. The day we opened the business was pretty cool, too, but, you know, that was more scary. The day we bought the building was more a feeling of satisfaction. My name is Olive Chase, and I live in Marston's Mills. Thank you.